Welcome to B&B RV. Today we'll be walking you through the 2022 Thor Chateau 24F, our 24 foot class C with one slide. All right, so starting on the driver's side here, uh, this first compartment will have your generator in it. Uh, shouldn't have to really get into this compartment for anything. The power switch for that is on the inside. Just be aware if you are running that, that is the exhaust. Uh, so that can get a little bit of warm and I would keep these windows closed. Your generator is gonna be for anything 110 inside the coach. If you guys aren't plugged into shore power, that includes your air conditioner, microwave, TV, DVD players, and any of the 110 plugs on the inside. Um, next is just a, a little compartment that has your slide controller in there. So we recommend not putting anything in there. Uh, you have a couple of options for the water. Uh, on this side is your city water direct connection. Uh, so you do have an onboard water tank, but this is a direct connection where you just screw the water hose in here. Uh, that bypasses the internal system. So once that's hooked in and the water's turned on, everything water-wise will work for you. Um, next up is your propane tank here. The things that use your propane are gonna be uh, your oven and your stovetop. You have a hot water option there, uh, furnace. Um, and your refrigerator runs off the propane if you're not hooked into shore power or running your generator. Uh, if you need to get that filled, you'll just take it to a designated fill area uh, and they'll fill that up for you. Uh, up top here, we have another storage compartment. Next up, we'll have our shore power connection and cable hookup. In this large compartment here, you'll find some of the free hospitality items, which will include this power cable. So you're just gonna pop this open uh, the end with the ring on it just plugs in there and secures with that ring. The other end is going to hook up to a 30 amp plug. Uh, that's going to be for any of those 110 items if you're not running the generator. Uh, it's basically either or there. Uh, those also help uh, charge up your house batteries as well. In this storage compartment, uh, you'll also find some camping chairs, leveling blocks, water hose, uh, coax cable, that sort of thing in there for you. Uh, largest storage compartment on the vehicle on the end here. Coming to the fuel fill, that's just gonna be regular unleaded fuel. Just below the fuel fill is where you'll empty out your black and your gray holding tanks. Uh, black tank is for your toilet and then the gray is for your sink and shower. So what you wanna do in the bumper here, you have your dump hose. So you're gonna grab this, pull it out of there. This will attach just like this cap uh, goes on there. So you just pull that off, put it on the end, give it a little twist to the right and you're locked in. Uh, other end goes into the dump station. Then you'll pull this black one first. So just pull that out, let it all drain, close it back up. Uh, and then we'll pull that gray one second so that soapy sink and shower water rinses that hose out. Uh, once we're done with that, we'll put the hose back. You'll find some chemical packs under the bathroom sink. You want to flush one of those down the toilet with a little bit of water. That'll help all those things break down uh, so it evacuates a little bit easier next time and keep everything fresh in the bathroom for you. Around back, we do have this ladder here. That's really just for maintenance. Uh, so no reason to climb on that. Uh, and then you do have the backup camera. Moving around to the passenger side here, we have a couple of storage compartments. We have that one there. And then we also have this one here. We have a couple of 110 plugs on the outside here. So with a shore power plugged in or the generator running, you could plug you know, a radio or something like that in on the outside. And then you have your fresh water tank fill here. This one's just gravity fill. So you'll take that water hose, uh, put it in that hole. And once that's full, it'll start running out that overflow there. This coach also comes equipped with the side cameras. So once you turn your turn signal on, it'll display what's in your blind spot there on the front uh, dash stereo there. Let's go take a look at the inside. Right inside the doorway here are some of your controls. First button here is for the awning. That's your patio awning. It's on the passenger side. To put that out, you want to push the button down and hold it, and it'll roll the awning out. And then you push it the other direction to bring it back in. You don't want to leave that awning out in inclement weather. If it's really windy, uh, make sure you roll that back in, obviously, before you take off driving. Next two buttons are going to be light switches. These are exterior lights. So you have rope lights on the outside and then there's a little light that's under the exterior step. Other two are also light switches. These are interior lights. So this one does all the lights on the inside. And then this one is just a step light that's down there in the step. 
This is very important. This shows that your battery is in the on position. So all of your battery operated items will work. You wanna leave this in the on position for the duration of the trip. Don't toggle it back and forth. It'll turn off things like the fridge and other things that you don't want turned off. Next one down is your stabilizer jacks. These are just for stabilizing. These are not for leveling. They shouldn't go down into the ground. They go down by pushing the arrow down. And as it's going down, you just want it to touch the ground and then stop. And then you push up to bring it back up. Make sure these are brought back up before you take off driving. There is an alarm, so if you put the key into the ignition, it will buzz and you'll know that they're still down and you need to put them all the way back up. And then the final one here is your solar controller. You do have solar panels on the roof. Those are just meant to keep the batteries charged. They will not charge if your batteries get too low. The good thing about this controller is it has your battery voltage on there. So 13s are great, 12s are good. Anything below that, you wanna make sure you're charging batteries. Again, you charge your batteries by starting the engine, running that generator, or plugging into shore power. Inside the doorway up on the cabinet in the kitchen is your main control panel. So we'll just go through all the functions on there. This corner is for the generator. So to start and stop the generator, you're gonna use this button here. So you just hold it down to start, and you're gonna wait until that engine actually kicks over, and then you can release the button. It takes about 30 seconds until you actually have the 110 power you need from that generator. Typically the indicator for that is gonna be the microwave. Uh, the lights will all come on on the microwave. This gauge here tells you how many hours have ran on the generator. So you get three free hours a night. If you do go over that, it's $3 an hour. To stop the generator, you push the button down and it stops. All of this section over here is all of your levels. So LPG is propane. When you push the button, the lights will light up. So right now that propane is full. Your batteries actually read on the L, F, G, and C. So that stands for low, fair, good, and charging. So right now we're showing good batteries. The C is not lit up because we did take that generator back off. So they're not charging. Fresh water tank here is full. Black empty, that's the toilet water. And then the gray is empty, that's the sink and shower water. So as you start using the fresh water, that'll go down, the black and gray will go up, and then you'll need to dump and refill your fresh tank. On this particular model, you have to have the emergency brake engaged and the key in the ignition and the engine on to operate the slide out. And then you just push down the extend button, run it all the way out, it'll stop once it's all the way. And then to retract, you just hold down the retract button and it pulls it back in. The bed in the back is folded up, so prior to operating the slide, if you unfold it, make sure you fold that back up. Water pump is here. You'll need the water pump if you're using the water out of the fresh water tank. So it lights up the pump light up top. If you are hooked into city water, then it bypasses the water pump and you don't need to have that on. Water heater options here. You have LP gas, which is propane, and 110, which is the electric. We do recommend using the propane. Uh, it's quicker and it's more efficient. So when you're ready for that hot water, you flip that on. It is a six gallon tank, so it's gonna take about 20, 30 minutes to have a hot tank of water. So flip it on, give yourself a little bit of time, and then you should have that hot water. Once you're done, flip it back off and that water heater will shut back down. Go ahead. The front cab area is gonna be very similar to your vehicle at home. Uh, in the left hand side of the driver's seat is where you adjust the electric mirrors. So move the button back and forth from left to right and use the arrows to adjust that top mirror. The bottom mirror is adjusted manually by hand. The light controls and then there's an emergency start button. The emergency start can be used if by chance you happen to kill your engine battery. It's separate from your coach batteries. So you can start the engine still by pushing that button, holding it down, and then putting the keys in and starting the vehicle off of the coach batteries. And then down below is that emergency brake. Like we talked about before, you do need that engaged to run your slide out. You push the pedal to engage it, and then there is a handle right above that that you pull to release it. The steering controls give you the cruise and other options. 
And then on the shifter itself, you have the tow haul option. That's used in the mountains when you want help with the transmission shifting. Uh, you just push the end of the button there and it'll give you a light on the dash that'll tell you that the tow haul mode has been engaged and that should help with the shifting going up and down those hills. And then radio and air functions over here. The radio does run off the house batteries or the coach batteries. What that means for you is when you take the key out of the ignition, it's not like your car where the radio is going to turn itself off. It's going to stay on unless you power it down. So the power button is the volume control. You just hold that silver knob and it'll shut that down and not run your batteries down. You have two TVs in the vehicle. One of them is up in the over cab area. The DVD and remote controls are up here. DVD will work for both TVs. There is a knob that will loosen up the arm swing arm and you can swing that out so you can adjust that how you want it. And then you can just put it back and tighten that so it doesn't move around while you're driving. And then up top here, you have the sleeping area. This piece fits down into the gap to make it into the bed. So you're gonna push that in, and then it has the rungs for the ladder in the front. The ladder's actually in the closet in the back, and we'll take a look at that when we go that direction. And then the other thing that's up top here is your privacy curtain. It does have Velcro and it goes on to these black Velcro strips that are in throughout the cab, so you can hang that up for privacy. Over to the side here, you have this little bin that you can keep stuff in. Just a warning, the slide is pretty close to that, so you don't wanna pack that too full or your slide's gonna get hung up there. And then this is charging. The great thing about the USB chargers in this vehicle is that they run off of the batteries. So it's not like plugging something into the outlet where you have to have the generator or be plugged into electricity. Over here on the table, you have a wireless charger, so you can just set your device on there for charging. And there is a USB plug in the center of that. And then up top here, you have some lights. The light switches will be these plain switches. That's some of the accent lighting. And then any of the ones that have the push button, you actually have to push the button to turn the light on and off. And then the table, goes up and down to create the sleeping area. To put the table down, you have this arm here that's gonna release the hold on the table. You're gonna wanna move these cushions up and out of the way. And then push down towards the center of the table until it's laying flat against that wood. And then cushions can go back in place. You use the back cushions to fill in And that's how it turns into a sleeping area. You have a large wardrobe back here, good for storage space, and the ladder for the bunk is in here. So you just get this guy out and it uh, telescopes up and that can hang on those front rungs up there. There is a bar for hanging clothes. Back here, we had already put the slide out. So the bed's folded up when that slide is out in when the slide goes out, you have room to bring that bed back down. So you're just pulling it down to give you that queen size bed in the back. Pretty simple functions here. You have cool fan off and heat. The fan we typically leave on auto. And then you can use the slider to go back and forth to pick your temperature. And then underneath is just another light switch. You have a full bath with shower sink and toilet. The toilet is a foot flush toilet, so the pedal is on the toilet itself. You push that when you're ready to flush and that'll put water down and open the valve. And then there is a GFCI outlet in the bathroom. So if you trip any of the outlets or have a power issue with your outlets, look in there. You may have to reset the GFCI just like you would at home. There's a button in the middle, push the button to reset. Over here is the kitchen area. You've got freezer and refrigerator. To open, you just pull the handles. These are sensitive handles, so be careful when you pull them open. You don't need to pull too hard. The controls for the refrigerator are right inside the freezer. The on-off button is here. In is on. It's already on. It'll be on for you when you come to pick up the vehicle. 
and then we leave it in the auto function. You don't want to mess with this or change this during the trip. Auto means it can run off of both propane and electricity. So it'll run on propane when you're not hooked up to power or have the generator on, and it'll run on electricity when you do have those things. So just leave that on. Only reason you would need to do anything with this is there's a check light. If that light comes on, you want to power it off, give it about five seconds, power it back on, and you're good to go. Cabinetry up here, this one's good for cans. It even has this so they don't roll around on you. You have a microwave uh, that runs on 110. So you need to either be plugged in or have the generator running for the microwave to work. You can tell when you have power on the microwave because the lights will come on. It runs just like the microwave at home. Three burner cooktop to light that. You're gonna go to the flame here and then this is your igniter. So you turn that and you've got the flame and then you can adjust it to whatever you need there. And make sure those are turned off obviously after you use it. And then this one is for the oven. Same idea there, you're gonna turn it to the flame and use the igniter. Sometimes the oven takes a couple attempts so just be patient there. Underneath, you have a couple more light switches and one of them is a fan. You have a fan overhead which is good to use while you're cooking. You have to have the switch for the fan on there, and there is actually a switch on the fan itself that needs to be on. So both switches on, and that fan will work. It blows air out, so you need to have that open. And then the sink is just like your normal sink at home. The actual air conditioning unit is on the ceiling in the main living area. If you have the AC on, and these vents are open, it's gonna come out right here at the vents. You can close those vents and that'll force it to come out of the other roof fence. You can adjust those, they slide around, go back and forth. Just remember the AC, you need to be plugged in or have that generator on to run the air conditioner. That concludes the walkthrough on our 2022 Thor Chateau 24F. Thanks for stopping by and we look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs>